NFL 24, and it's brought to you by EA Sports. It's the Niners and the Vikings. All that and more coming up next. And we find ourselves at the stadium that played host to Super Bowl 52, the wondrous U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. Today, two NFC clubs going head-to-head -head, as it'll be the San Francisco 49ers taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Brandon Gordon, so pleased to be joined as always by Charles Davis. A CD, these Vikings had things rolling in 2022, a 13-4 record, new head coach, an exciting offense, but it all came crashing down in another early playoff exit. And that really was because of the defensive side of the ball. They had a terrific record. Would they win 11 games by one score or less in NFL record? Got to get strong on the defensive side in order to get deeper into the playoffs. Then for the visiting 49ers, you know, they're exciting on the offensive side of the ball, but it's the defense that really provides a lot of stability. They were second by a whisker to the Bills in total defense a year ago. And they have all pro caliber players at all three levels, all capable of taking over a game. Greg Joseph now ready to get this one started, and we are underway from Minneapolis. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. And the Niners offense set to go to work, and it's last year's revelation, Brock Purdy, who leads him out in season number two from Iowa State. There weren't many bigger stories last season than Purdy, who's officially the most famous Mr. Irrelevant of all time. Won each of his first five starts and almost guided his team to a Super Bowl. He's really forced the team to reevaluate its plans at quarterback because he looks like the real deal. Here's the Pro Bowler, Christian McCaffrey. He'll work his way up the middle for a gain of about four, second down. Ball on the 27, here's second and six. Now Samuel. midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down give him 32 on the play first down San Francisco here's Purdy pressure coming from the Vikings and they get there and bring him down and a timeout. Looks like we've got a Viking slow to get up. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. McCaffrey running up the middle. And down to the 44, five yards that time. Third down and 13. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. And they get Pro Bowl tackle Trent Williams for the infraction there. So the false start certainly doesn't help matters as they'll try again now, third and long. McCaffrey following the penalty. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up 
think you throw the ball in this situation, and when they ran, it almost felt like a little bit of a surrender, maybe a give up. But I don't know if that's really the case. They might have been probing a little bit, checking the defense and filing it away for later. They might have something working later on. So on fourth down, here's the Australian native Mitch Wisnowski to punt this one away. Brandon Powell deep for Minnesota. And you can't do it much better than that. This ball kicks out of bounds at the four-yard line. So here are the Vikings set to go to work, and they're led by the leading passer in the NFC a season ago. Now in his 12th year, sixth as a Viking, Kirk Cousins. So this is where we find out about the game plan and the trust factor, don't we? In this situation, the natural thing is take care of the ball, run it inside, everyone cover it. Just, you know, get yourself some room and let your punter punt it out of there. But when you've really got a QB you can trust, you might want to take a little shot early and try and create some space. Going to begin the drive here with Madison. And he gets forward up the middle, but only for a couple. It'll be second down. That first down play, all you want to do is wedge out any type of space and try and create enough room that if you have to run the punter out there, he can successfully complete the punt. Yeah, didn't get a ton there, but at least some positive yardage. Here's a second and eight. Now Cousins. Throw out wide is incomplete. Well, he left no doubt about that one because even though he hasn't left the pocket, he's got a receiver in the area, so it's not grounding, even though there is no way that ball was going to be caught. Facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone, they need some cushion. Let's see what they can do on third down. Throwing his Cousins. That is incomplete. Nice job there, forcing that incompletion. This is going to be a fun battle throughout this game, watching him try to take away that area of the field. Now here's Ryan right now. And no room for air here as his first punt comes from deep in his own end zone. And he's able to get it out quickly, and this is not a bad kick here. We'll call it a 42-yard punt, three on the return. And the Niners set up well. They take over first and 10 on the short side of the field. Back out there comes the 49ers offense ready for their second drive. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive, first and 10. First down, this is McCaffrey. And some space here. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. 31 yards there and a first down. What did you see there on the defensive side? What allowed that good size run? Well, they were in a cover two alignment, which means your two safeties are back away from the line of scrimmage. So if you can match up your blocking at the line, at the point of attack, there's usually some room, a big gap between that second level and third and that's what they were able to exploit. Here's Purdy on first and 10. They'll find Ayuk open right side. So the completion good for seven there, and it'll be second down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose, and boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Second down from the eight. They can get a first down by reaching the five. Up the gut, McCaffrey. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and now they'll have it first and goal. We are watching a runner having a really nice game. Carrying it very well. Vision is excellent, but boy, look at the help he's getting. Offensive line, I think they're pretty eager to block for him. And throwing here, Purdy. the football and the Vikings pick up the football and hey, we can put ball security all we want here but how about that effort on defense excellent job inside the red zone just took away at least three points by forcing that ball the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game 
These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Had a bit of a lane there, took advantage of it. Give them seven there on the first down carry. Next receivers help spread the defense out. And they were able to come through with a slashing run. But to that point, it's going to be interesting to see the personnel chess match as this one progresses. Yeah, you're exactly right. Can they continue to create running lanes out of passing sets? And if so, it's going to be a long day for the defense. On play action, Cousins. That is caught by Josh Oliver, the former San Jose State Spartan. 12 yards there, first down Vikings. <laughs> I got kicked out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. The throw over the middle, take it in. And that's good for a gain of six, and that will bring up second down. Here's a give to Madison running right. And now off to the races, down the right side. Inside the 10, and finally taken down at the four-yard line. A big play there for Minnesota, and even 60 yards. So down inside the five-yard line, I have to say, really just a poor job defensively there. You're exactly right. As a former defensive back, that was not played well at all. But give credit to the offense and give credit to the guy running the football. He gets it down all the way inside the five. First and goal from just inside the five. Madison. And he gets halfway there from the four to the two on a gain of two. I know he might be a little winded after that previous long run, but now you're in goal-to-goal -goal situation. That changes what you do defensively, and it worked for them on that play. Maybe trying to reward him after that long run. We'll see if they go back to him again on the ground. Cousins to throw it. And he is going to lose yardage here. Call it a loss of two there on the play. And this brings up a third and goal. Here's Cousins toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Fourth down now as San Fran's defense was strong in coverage. They had a good chance to get the first points of the game on the board, but what a great job defensively getting a hand in there, knocking it away, and preventing that first touchdown. The kick by Joseph is good, and the Vikings have a 3 0 lead. With some complimentary football there. One side, your defense forces the fumble, and then they drive it down the field. Now, obviously, Charles, they wanted the touchdown, but at least they were able to drive it down and get three out of that. Yeah, now we'll have to see how the other sideline responds because they had plenty of time during that field goal to think about that fumble and how they were going to react. What are they going to do when they get the ball back and try and make things a little bit better for their team? Joseph now to kick this one away. Returning from his end zone is Ray Ray McLeod. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. The 49ers ready to set up shop again offensively. 
And they'll be looking to atone for last time's mistake of fumbling inside the red zone. Certainly, they don't want to do that again. And so much emphasis placed on red zone offense. I mean, you have periods devoted in practice just for that because everyone knows how vital it is to put points on the board when you've entered that part of the field and to come away with nothing. That's difficult for a team to handle. And yeah, difficult, and now we'll see if they can make it less difficult on themselves on this drive. So the completion good for six yards, and it'll be second down. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. So many times defensive backs get caught playing the man rather than the football, but not in this case. That's an excellent play. Did exactly what you're supposed to do. Attack the football and help break up the pass. Yep, as a result, knocks it down. Now Purdy. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. He'll get 17 on that one, and the Niners have a first down. And this pass rush has really been bringing the heat and has already gotten home a few times here in the first half. So how about the play call there? Sometimes if you can't protect, you've got to fool them. Screen passes like that can take a little steam out of what's been a relentless rush so far. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Back to throw, Purdy. Connects with Kimmel underneath. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. There's a completion to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. Speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? On second down, McCaffrey dances by him. And a good run here as he'll rumble all the way down to the 40-yard line. 60 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. Boy, some big runs here, Charles, already in this first quarter. Yeah, if the lanes are there, go ahead and exploit them. But what I like the most, how decisive he is, putting his foot in the ground and going. Now on first down, it's Purdy. His throw incomplete. And their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. Purdy looking to throw. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get out to your running back, and it can turn into a big gain downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. This Minnesota D up to the task on the third down. Yeah, it's still early in the game. No sense taking a chance on third down and forcing one into traffic. So I like the wise play he made there. Get it to the sideline out of bounds where no one's going to have a chance at it. Wisnowski on to punt as he sends this one away. And this will be out of bounds. Now it's a question of where they'll mark it. And they'll say it crosses at the 11-yard line. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. They'll start on the ground with Madison. And not much here as he'll get it to the 11, maybe the 12-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine.
Cousins. This goes out wide for Madison. And he'll get it up a little shy of the 15. They'll spot him down at the 14-yard line. Just a gain of a couple there. Third and seven now. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Into the hands of the rookie, Jordan Addison. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. Well, we hear so often how tackling has become almost a lost art in the NFL game, but it's so important to tackle well on these receivers, especially in a play like this one. Third down, they gave him the underneath stuff. you got to go up and make the tackle right away. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. 3-0 after one on EA Sports. The 49ers with the football here to begin the second quarter as they get set to start their drive with a first and ten. The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. Purdy to throw it on first down. That ball caught. Brandon Ayuk. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. Man open, that's Debo Samuel. The result, only four yards there on the play. And that'll bring up second down. It's now second and six at the 43-yard line. Purdy now to throw. Open man is Juwan Jennings. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 30. 13 yards as the quick slant keeps the drive moving. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. They'll give it up to McCaffrey. Knifes his way forward here, but just three yards on the play. Second down. He was brought down at the 28-yard line. A three-yard pickup brings up second and seven. Ball on the 28-yard line. Here's second down and seven. Purdy will set up to throw it here. That's caught out right by Jennings. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 17-yard line. Give them 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Purdy. The tight end Kittle has it on the left side. Touchdown 49ers! George Kittle from 17 yards out. And the 49ers have now taken the lead. So they get their tight end away from the line to the outside, and he works his way in for six. Tight ends are not just blockers anymore. I don't know how many more times we need examples, but here's a great one. Gets to the outside. They give him the ball pretty quickly, and they trust him to get those extra yards. And boy, did he come through bowling his way into the end zone after the nice catch. Moody good with the extra point, and that makes it a 7-3 lead. Three. 
So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. It's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. 90 yards here for Madison. He's got a first down. We've seen him break off a big run already in this game, and for a second, that would look like it might be another. Yeah, I think that any defense would say, look, we can't let him get to the second level because sometimes he'll break off the big run on his own, but oftentimes you get additional blocking at the second level, which gets you deeper into the secondary. Cousins and a throw here caught by Addison. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it's second down. What terrifies defenses when they see slant routes thrown is that the receiver is on the move, and oftentimes he catches it and gets upfield. That's a really nice job rallying to him and stopping him for a minimal gain. Play action now, Cousins. Pass caught here by Osborne. A big play there for Minnesota. 42 yards. The timing was absolutely true as he caught it working across the field. Plenty of space for him to roam. But notice how he keeps his head on a swivel, looking for defenders who may crop up out of nowhere. That turned into a big play. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. Throwing his Cousins. Touchdown, Vikings! Jordan Addison from eight yards out. And the Vikings have regained the lead. He was on point throwing the ball right there. He had the big play to get him down close, and then he delivers a touchdown pass on first and goal. And you mentioned the big play that got him down close. I think that big play left him reeling a little bit. They didn't recover from it. And you know they always talk about having to have a short memory on defense after a big play against you? Looks like their memory was a little too long there. Joseph connects on the extra point, and the lead is now 10-7. The drive summary, four plays, 75 yards. And Jordan Addison capped it off with a touchdown catch. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. The football will come out to the 25 as McLeod will not return it. The Brock Purdy and the offense back out there. Five for five that last drive. Touchdown pass as well. He was clicking. Receivers, I don't want to be cliche, but running really solid routes too. And what I love about it is when you look across any team, all right, the body types of the receivers are usually different. The way that they get open, different as well. Some of them use power to get open. Some of them use those head fakes and subtle moves. Some of them just use pure speed. And the really good ones, when they're established, they know how to push off at the end of a route, too. The run on first down gets him a couple up to the 27. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Here's Purdy. Connects with Kittle underneath. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Catch number four for him on the afternoon, and it'll give him a first down. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space and kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. 
This is McCaffrey on the give. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Second down and eight. The throwing here, Purdy. They'll find Ayuk open right side. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. 27 yards there, a first down. And maybe that touchdown on the previous drive has re-energized this offense a little bit. They've been kind of sluggish until then, but they're showing signs of life here. And they get good yardage that time in a first down. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10, down at the 31. A handoff, McCaffrey running right, and he's got it down to the 28. They'll come up second and seven. Back to throw. Purdy. He'll get this underneath to McCaffrey. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 15-yard line. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. Purdy throw complete here to IU. And the 49ers are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. It doesn't matter where on the field he is, even down here in the red zone, he is still slippery with the ball in his hands, and he was almost able to work his way into the end zone. Instead, they'll have to settle for first and goal, but they'll take it. Now they'll send a tight end in motion left. McCaffrey. Will score. Touchdown, 49ers. Well, we talk a lot about Christian McCaffrey and what he can do in the open field, and it's easy to gloss over how tough he can be to stop near the goal line. And he shows you just how tough he is on that carry as he takes it into the end zone. Now Moody for the PAT. And that makes it 14-10. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And the last play on the drive, the touchdown run from Christian McCaffrey. So after the made field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. Nuwangu now from his end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. Touchdowns on back-to-back -back drives, so a very good flow right now offensively. Hard to slow them down, too, because they are locked in. Feel like the offense coordinator is a little bit ahead of the defensive guys right now. They're beating them to the punch with their play calls. They've got a nice rhythm they're locked into. How can the defensive guys come up with something that'll disrupt that flow? That's what they're seeking right now. Well, it's been an exciting sequence to watch. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. Here's second and 10. Running from the shotgun with Madison. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. That's a gain of three. It's third and seven. Oh, 
And this offense on third down today, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and seven. To throw is Cousins. He's got his target. That's complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They go play action. Cousins. This is Alexander Madison out of the backfield with it. Short completion, just four yards, and that'll make it second down. On play action, Cousins. To the sideline and incomplete. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Cousins. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Ambry Thomas, and the return stops at the 39-yard line. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot, and if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there, and sure enough, this one's going the other way. Out comes Christian McCaffrey with the rest of the offense. And he's well on his way to a 100-yard game. He's already more than halfway there. We're only in the second quarter. And what I've always loved about running backs is they'll tell you, I had no idea how many yards I had. Right. Those guys <laughs> have an innate sense of where they are in a ball game and how many yards they've accumulated because you know they're always working towards 100. He's been working well towards 100 here. McCaffrey and down inside the 35 he goes to the 32 yard line 80 yards rushing for him now in the ball game a seven yard pickup brings up second and three at the 32 yard line two minutes remaining in this first half of football here's second and three Shotgun now with Purdy. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. Whenever I see an in route dropped, as we just saw in that play, I'm always thinking that in the back of their mind, they're worried about what's coming at them because they're going towards traffic on that route as opposed to being away from it and maybe having a little bit more space. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have a 49ers first down. They needed three. He doubled that. He got six. As you know, so many things in the passing game are based on yardage. Sometimes it's just based on timing. And that's what we saw right there on that play. Third and three. Just get the ball right to the receiver. It's the hitch route. And tell us, what is the hitch route? Yeah, just take really one step, like you're driving off the line of scrimmage, get the defensive back on his heels, get the ball out to the receiver, and he does the rest. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. That was a nice job defensively of disguising their coverage and making it difficult for the quarterback to lock in on a receiver, and it results in an incomplete pass. Now a second and ten. Purdy sets up to throw again. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. I know it was a gain, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something, be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackling held it to an okay gain. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Niners first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 
that's a play that will likely be forgotten when you talk about big moments in this game. But plays like this are critical to keep drives going. And if points result, we'll call this play significant. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Purdy will look to throw again here. He's got IU once again. And the Niners are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. And these two hooked up on a nice game to play before, and I always admire play callers that see a play that works and go right back to it, so they went right back to him. The reward, they're set up with first and goal. Now Purdy. Touchdown! Brandon Ayuk as the first half is winding down. And the 49ers will extend their lead here just before halftime. Partner, to me, that touchdown had something that was kind of rooted in that group seeing the future. What I mean by that is they had a plan. Let's find a way to score right here before the half, and that'll give us momentum going into the second half. Give us that cushion that we're looking for. They got that accomplished, scoring right before the half ended. Extra point try now for Moody. It's good, and it's 21-10. So that drive goes eight plays. And it was Brandon Ayuk capping it off with a touchdown reception. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And he returns this to the 22. The Vikings take over first and 10 at their own 22-yard line. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting 49ers on top. As we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment, but welcome everyone to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports Halftime Report. We saw the former All-Pro Christian McCaffrey up to his old tricks in that first half. He had a touchdown run that helped get his guys this halftime lead. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Vikings set to receive the second half kickoff, and they trail it here as we resume play. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Out come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. By no means certainly are they out of this contest. Two-score game start of the third quarter, but you feel like if they don't get points and then they give up points, then it can become a slippery slope. This feels like an important possession. Yeah, that slope becomes even more slick if you come away empty-handed on this drive because then you give them a chance to extend their lead. You need some kind of points here, even if it's just a field goal. It's what I call one of those calming drives, try and slow things down a little bit. 
throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. At this point in the game, in the situation they're in, partner, these incompletions that we're seeing, they need to turn into positive snaps and soon. Second and 10. They'll go Madison up the middle, and he'll take this one up close to the 25-yard line. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Now Cousins. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, if they have any designs on getting back into this football game in the second half, they're going to need to be much sharper offensively than they were on this opening possession. Not much happening here, and it'll lead to a fourth down. And here's Ryan right now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10 at the 34. And he'll start by handing this off to McCaffrey. He'll get this to about the 38. Now a second and six. They stay on the ground. McCaffrey again. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. set up to throw it here that is caught and he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out second catch for him today and it'll wind up a first down a little football 101 there you just see the receiver try to run down the defender meaning he goes right at him and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch On first down, Purdy being chased out left. Turns out to be a great idea to tuck that one. Good for 24 yards. Well, that turned out better than most of the passes he could have thrown on that snap. The coverage downfield was excellent, but the containment close to home left him a backdoor escape, and they paid dearly for not locking up. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. He'll get this out wide here to McCaffrey. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. Purdy looking to throw. Now the pressure gets there, and he goes down just inside the 20 at the 19. Daniil Hunter picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Well, they had to write down in the definite distance to take a shot downfield, but it didn't work out the way that they had envisioned. No, that's a situation where if, if you take a sack close to the line of scrimmage, it's not that bad, but a loss like that, you can't, you can't take a sack there. Yeah, absolutely. The one thing you cannot do, they did. Now play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. Out of the gun, Purdy. And that one incomplete, but now a penalty flag coming in late. That might be P.I. Ethan. 
Well, the crowd doesn't like that. Was going to bring up fourth. Now it's first. <laughs> they don't like it at all, do they? It brings them back into it, but really not in a positive way. Now they're angry. That can jangle a team a little bit as well. Pass interference ruined that series of downs for them. Forced out to his left. And across the chalk into the end zone. It's a 49er touchdown. Brock Purdy. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Niners are able to stretch out their lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical, as one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now, starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also drain clock, too, with yep. a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. Take it at about the one. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 21. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. You know they wanted, you know they expected. They needed him to be sharp coming out after the half. Unfortunately, he's missed his first three throws. I wonder if he got out late and missed his warm-up time. The whole team did come out a little bit later than usual. I don't know, maybe there's something to that. Must have been a heck of a halftime speech. They have maybe just trying to rally the troops back from this deficit. Now he dumps this off over the middle, and he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Cousins. That pass taken in by Addison. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And you start to think if it's going to happen for these guys, it's got to start with this drive. Down three scores, they need to start making some inroads. And that will help the cause there as they pick up good yardage and a first down. Cousins on first down. That's caught by the big tight end, T.J. Hawkinson. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. No gain on the play, and now they're faced with a third and one. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Throwing Cousins. He's got his running back out of the backfield. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. Well, they only needed a small gain on third down. They end up getting over 30 yards. And this offense needed something to try and seize the momentum a little bit. And that might have been exactly what they needed. Now they have a chance to go downfield and score and cut into the lead. So 
So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Cousins now. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. How about the way they're moving the ball down the field? They had a big play a moment ago, followed it up with another nice one here, and before you know it, they're already looking at first and goal. They'll try to run with Madison, and he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Alexander Madison taking it in from a yard out. And the Vikings are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. Well, they move the ball down the field through the air, Charles, and then finally they get the running game involved, and it works to perfection. Touchdown. And, partner, I kept waiting for that running game to come into play, and they actually saved it until the very end. Touchdown goes on his stat sheet, but you and I both know, and he knows as well, his teammates airing it out made this a successful drive. Joseph connects on the extra point, and the lead is down to 11 at 28-17. Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. McLeod now on the return. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Christian McCaffrey and his 49er teammates back onto the field. He's toppled the century mark already receiving the football, closing in on that on the ground too. They've really had trouble handling him. I think from what we've seen in this game, his success through the air has started to open things up for him on the ground because now he's loosened up the defense, right? They've got to play just about every snap as if another receiver can get downfield on them, and he's been that receiver. Now they bring him back to the backfield. I think his yardage running the ball will increase this. Look at this, middle of the field, a breakaway. Christian McCaffrey. Touchdown, 49ers. Christian McCaffrey with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the 49ers are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Well, that is certainly a deflator right there defensively. Their guys just came off of a touchdown drive. They're back in the game, and then bam, they give up a touchdown one play later. How about that? And the momentum, which seemingly had shifted the other direction, thought we might be seeing a comeback. <laughs> that momentum right back the other way. Well, that is certainly not complimentary football that we saw right there. The defense is supposed to help their offense, not give up another touchdown. Moody good with the extra point, and the lead is up to 18 now. So following the touchdown, here's Moody back out to send it away. And able to get this out to the 25. Alexander Madison leading this Vikings offense out there to begin the next drive. And the numbers for him, pretty solid, really. He's run it well. He's caught it pretty well. But they're still far behind the eight ball on the scoreboard. Not able to use his talents, as you noted, to narrow the gap in the scoreboard. Sometimes it's a bend but don't break, right? He gets his yardage, that's cool, but it's not paying off on the scoreboard. They're not getting the points necessary. And if you're a defensive team, you'll give up that yardage for the kind of lead they have. That's what I was going to ask you. Sometimes you say, let this guy do his thing. Let's control what we can control elsewhere. Yeah, exactly. Take away the rest of the guys. Don't let them hurt you as well. But the biggest one is they've contained him well enough that they've been able to increase their lead. When you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. 
Now a second down throw for Cousins. Now throw out wide, going to be incomplete. Well, they approached this drive with a lot of confidence after their last one ended up as a touchdown. But incompletions on their first two throws has them huddling up and trying to figure out a big play here on third down to get their momentum going again. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. To throw, Cousins. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. And they're going to get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to the 30. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And that'll bring up fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, like hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done. Fair catch signaled for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. And they will take over first and 10. The drive begins with a run by McCaffrey. Now, during that run, an injury here. We got one of those big blockers in some discomfort. Well, hopefully, obviously, nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. Now second and five. Here's Purdy. Connects with Kittle underneath. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. And they call his number again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Brandon Ayuk, the one he was looking for. That'll bring up second down. Purdy now to throw. He'll get this underneath to McCaffrey. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Once more, Purdy looking to throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. Well, they only needed a small gain on third down. They end up getting over 30 yards. With that down in distance, no real surprise. They decided to throw the ball. But I think where the surprise kicked in, the result, short pass downfield. That ball got taken for a nice journey to turn into a big play. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Purdy. That is caught by the tight end Kettle. Touchdown, 49ers. A great effort there. A beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the 49ers get another third quarter touchdown to add on to that lead. Now Moody for the PAT. And they open the lead up now to 25 points. 
A drive that time of six plays. And it all ends with a George Kittle touchdown. So after the main field goal by Moody, he's back out to kick this one away. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. Let's see if they can put this drive in the end zone, Charles, because it, it's been a little bit of a rough go at times. They've had to punt the football a ton in this ball game because of stalled out drives. So are you saying that you're kind of tired of seeing the punter run out there and do his thing during this game? Is that what you're trying to say? You, well, I mean, I'm OK with it. I have a feeling that this offense, they don't want to see the punter again. And frankly, the punter doesn't want to run out there anymore himself. He would love to see his offense put together a drive and give his leg a rest. 113 yards rushing for him now to this point. They've been running it well all game, and why not? The big guys up front, they're just having a ball, creating monster holes for their guys to run through. Extra bulk up front for second and inches. Three tight ends. On play action, Cousins. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. The best receivers we know always tease their quarterbacks that, hey, no matter what you do, you cannot overthrow me. Well, guess what? That's exactly what happened on that play. Normally, they time it up pretty well, but on that one, he just overshot him. Third and short yardage, Cousins. And the throw there going to be incomplete. All right, keep me honest here, Brandon. So they decide not to run the football again. They had two shots to try and pick up the first down, probably fairly easily on the ground. Now it's fourth down. And we'll see if those decisions come back to haunt them. And here's Ryan right now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And a fair catch called for and made just outside the 15-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10, at their own 17-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Gets this one to use check. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets this football out shy of the 30 to the 29. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. Trying for Ayuk, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Byron Murphy, and they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. Well, to be blunt, not a whole lot has gone right for this defense in this ball game, but that's something right there still in the third quarter. It would take something around miracle territory for a comeback, but maybe that's a start, Charles. It certainly is, and they're definitely showing that there's some fight still left in them. Hasn't been a banner day. But they're trying their best to put that disappointment behind them and find ways to make plays. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Following the interception, Cousins. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. I'll give them credit winning that first snap and forcing an incompletion. They're hoping that'll deflate the offense a little bit after they took the field charged up after taking over after a turnover. Glad to have you with us from Minneapolis. Third quarter here, second and ten. Now Cousins. 
Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. They get six. That'll leave him with third and four. It's a gain of six. Makes it third and four. Now Cousins. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he will have a Vikings first down as he's able to get eight yards there on third and five. But with the score where it is, you're not thinking field goals right now. You need touchdowns. So that was a much-needed conversion there on third down. Now here's a whistle as flags come in. And we'll check out the call. Ball start. Offense. Ezra Cleveland, the guard, called for the penalty there. Still first down. The false start backs him up five, first and 15. On the handoff, it's Madison. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Without the previous penalty, that would have been a first down. Instead, it's just a gain of 10. Three quarters have come and gone. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. Cousins now on second down. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. <laughs> to throw is Cousins. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. After all the preparation, all the practice, a play like that will absolutely break your heart. They had everything they wanted, just unable to complete it. In the end zone, a big time drop. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Here's Cousins. Throwing the out route and complete. That's Osborne. And down inside the 10 here before he's out of bounds, right around the seven. Five yards, now it's third and five. Cousins to throw it. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. K.J. Osborne. A seven yard touchdown grab. And the Vikings are able to cut into that deficit. He's got them out now to a three score lead here in the fourth quarter after that one, CD. And well, he looked right off the line like he knew that that ball was coming his way and he secured it for six points. Yeah, I think when you're leading by a healthy margin already, it actually loosens you up and allows you to take maybe a few more chances and definitely play with more confidence because he certainly saw something he could exploit in the defense, and he made sure to let his quarterback know, just get it to me. And the rest was all up to him, and he delivered and made it a three-score game. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. The 49ers offense now, they work their way back onto the field. Certainly no reason to panic. They've got the three-score lead, but the turnover last time, the interception that led to a touchdown, you'd have to think they might not be dialing that up again. Yeah, probably not. They're still in fantastic shape, though, so I would imagine before he trotted out here for this series, head coach probably just leaned over to him and was like, listen, we're wearing these color shirts. <laughs> Throw it to those guys, not the others. Try to make a joke out of it and just let them go out there with a little bit more confidence. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Brings up second and nine at the 
Purdy will set up to throw it here. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. So that'll go as a four-yard loss on the play. And that'll make it third and 13. Well, Brandon, we could see that play developing, and they were hoping that he was going to be able to put a move on the first guy and turn it into a big play. But no such luck. The speed on defense continues to get better and better in the NFL. Pretty nice example there of those guys being able to run from their assignments and finish off that play. Three yards won't be enough here as that'll bring up fourth down. Well, the guys who are paid to make the tackles deserve some kudos there, but I think they deserve even bigger ones because in that situation, they had to be thinking pass. Loosened up defense, going to pass coverage. Instead, maybe they surprised him a little bit running the ball, yet they rallied to it and stopped him well short of a first down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. On oh, the return is Powell. Seven yards on the return after a punt of 39. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And out now come the Vikings. Well, this game, it has had no shortage of offense. They've been able to put up a decent amount of points on this side, Charles. They just have not been able to keep pace with the other offense they're going against here. Yeah, that's a good way of pointing things out because now it's not a total loss because, as you said, they've scored some points, so there's some plays they can build on, moments where the game plan actually worked. But overall, though, they were just out-personnel. They were going up against a team that's playing at an elite level. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. At the 47-yard line. Throwing his cousins. He'll find Harry on the right side. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Cousins. Catch is made by Harry. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. This duo locked in. 14 yards there. And a first down. Now a give to Madison. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Well, Brandon, he's had a great day, but sometimes the other guys make a play against you. What's that expression they like to use in the NFL? Those guys get paid, too, you know. Yeah, in college they say, hey, they're on scholarship, too, in the NFL. They're getting paid, too. With the day he's had, you can have one go in the wrong direction. Here's Madison getting it again on second. He gets them a little over half of what they needed. Now they're looking at a third and five. Cousins. He's going to find his running back. It's complete. And this won't do it. He needed six. He only got halfway there. Always important as a defender on third down to keep the play in front of you and make sure you don't give up enough space that they can make a move on you in the open field. Try as he might, he wasn't able to get to the first down marker. Excellent defense. Good tackling. Desperation time. Cousins on fourth down. And he is caught. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14, before he's out of bounds. But no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. So this drive going to continue following the conversion on fourth. Here's first and 10. They'll run it with Madison, and he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Defense. Come on, 
Well, you hate that defensively. They had him pretty well corralled, but the face mask, that obviously changes things. Yeah, it's a bit frustrating because you feel like you did everything right. You had him stop, but the hand gets up just a little too high, and the natural inclination is to hold on, and that's going to get called every time. Throwing Cousins. And this is caught. For the moment, it's a touchdown, but multiple flags down, so let's sort this out. Defense. So obviously they will decline the penalty there and the result is six points. Joseph on for the extra point. And that one makes this an 11 point deficit now. So that drive in total eight plays. And it was all finished off on the touchdown catch by Nikhil Harry. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. This fielded right at the goal line. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. Well, the 49ers settling in for their next drive. What was once a really comfortable lead is not so comfortable anymore. Down to a two-score game after they've seen a pair of touchdowns go against them on those last two drives. Yeah, they've got to find a way to get off of autopilot right now, okay? Get back to what was working for them earlier. Understand that they still have a two-score lead, so it's not dire, but at the same time, okay, guys, let's match the gas. Let's get going again. Let's have some fun. Purdy going to lead the 49ers to the line, first and 10. At the 20, they start on the ground with McCaffrey. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they had three tight ends in on that set. And these guys are punching really well. I use boxing analogies a lot. A lot of coaches have told me that when you line up to run the football, it's 10 fist fights along the line of scrimmage, right? You've got to win your share. These three tight ends, they almost always win their fist fights. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37 yard line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. the shotgun to McCaffrey and he'll be brought down just shy of the 45 that's what they needed it's an eight yard gain and now third and four suddenly doesn't look so bad the recipe is pretty simple I think right just <laughs> give your superstar the ball continue to feed him yeah don't overthink this one right make sure he's touching the football but you're also counting on his intelligence and in playing the game as well if it's not there don't force the run just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. And he is going to have a 49ers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, you don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. Yep, confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't have to tuck your head in and, take, and go like turtle at this point. You can just go ahead and play. Purdy completes this one here to McCaffrey. It'll go down as a gain of six. And that's going to bring up second down. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. Back to the ground attack here. It's McCaffrey. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. 
Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys are just saying, let's just keep running it at them. We've got them now. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. This drive's taken more than three minutes off the clock already as they come up on second down. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's 49er football here as we get you reset. And you'd have to figure they're just looking to burn these final two minutes away and get out of here with a victory. McCaffrey on the counter. Out of scrimmage and taken down. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on. A big call coming on third down. So they decline the hold, and that's going to lead to a fourth down. So Purdy off and Moody on for the 49er field goal. From the left hash, it's an even 50-yard attempt. And his kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. Well, no field goal attempts for him until the final quarter, but no hesitation on his end. He comes right out and nails his first field goal try. I give him a lot of credit, too, because he stood there the entire ball game, but has managed to stay with it both mentally and physically. When they called on him, he was ready, and he knocked it through the posts. So here's Moody back out there now to send this one away. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. So Cousins and the Vikings down by two touchdowns. Just over a minute, 40 to play. Field goals, useless at this point. They need two touchdowns, and they need them in short order. <laughs> Cousins on first down. Finding Harry. And he's going to get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. At this stage, this drive's got to be touchdown or bust because you need two of them. And if I'm the offensive play caller, I'm not just looking at my dagger plays downfield. I'm looking at some of my specials, something that can fool them and give you a big play now. With a sense of urgency. No doubt. Second down, Cousins. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. You get into these two-minute drill situations and you've often got tired legs on the offensive line. But these defenders, they've been rotating in and out, and they're a little bit fresher and quicker. And the pressure there forced the incompletion. They'll come to the line. This is third and three. To throw, Cousins. 
And that is incomplete. That means it's just one last chance left, and this has to be a first down or a touchdown, or this game's over. Here we go. This is fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Niners take over in terrific field position. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none? Yes, exactly right. Got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and ten. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it within an eyelash. Dropped it to one. Down to a knee for the 49ers. This one about to be on ice. So he'll take a knee here to wrap this one up, but he's going to want to keep that game ball. He was sensational. So it's a win for the Niners here, and it was thanks in large part to the play of their second-year quarterback. Yeah, he was definitely the X factor. He had three touchdown passes, ran for another, and really had this defense grasping for straws throughout much of this ball game.